webinar on reporting documents printing. Oh my. Just before we get started, I want to check and see if you're able to see my screen and hear me okay. Just raise hands on the good webinar, that would be great. I see a few hands raised. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, we'll kick right off in today's session. My name is Darshni Shah, and I'm the product manager here with K3. And today I am joined by Nick Trevor, the product development manager. Hello, everyone. As you can see us here, and you can see our screens, let's focus really on the content for today's screen. So I'm going to stop sharing my webcam so you can focus very much on the content. What's today all about? Well, let's take a look and see what the agenda is, what we're going to be covering today. We're going to set the scene of what we're going to talk about in terms of the actual idea behind document printing and reporting. We're going to talk about some of the tools that we have in our toolkit. We're going to start seeing some of these tools in action. And really, the focus is going to be on the bulk of what do you actually want to use at what point in time. So without further ado, we all live in the world that has something related to this. We might have a factory, we might have distribution, engineering drawings, some repair jobs that might be coming in. We've got lots and lots of dispatch going on and we've got reporting board packs. So all of that's happening in our businesses on a day in and day out basis. And we've got various users that are wanting different elements that they wanna consume based on what they want. And as much as I'd like to be green, we know that paper is gonna flow throughout that organization. There may be some elements that have been transformed into products such as Translution or mobile devices or even Cispro that you see scattered throughout the organization. However, there is that piece of paper that's still going to say to someone what they need to do at what point in time. We're gonna have some reports, some trend analysis that might be coming through. We may have alerts or announcements that come through as part of what's happening in the business and that ERP information needs to get bubbled up. And that's where we need to now go ahead and trigger for someone to do something with it. So documents, reports, fundamentally, the end goal is really telling someone what it is that they need to do, where they need to do it, what do they need to do next potentially what's actually happening today, where am I at with it, and maybe signal and do a little bit of crystal ball gazing for the future, and maybe even do just a bit of a state of the nation. So with that in mind, what are some of the things that we have available in that toolkit? Well, for those of you that have been a Woods Pro quite a long time now, we've had quite a few tools available within Cispro itself for a while. There is a traditional report writer that was available for a very long time. If you were within the space of finance, you had the financial report writer. And if you're really old school, you might have even used ODBC to extract some of that data out and do some external reporting. Then came CISPRO 6.1 and CISPRO expanded out and really enriched the reporting space with the introduction of CISPRO reporting services. With CISPRO 7 and 8, we have the introduction of business insights that now start driving user behavior right within the product itself. And you've got OData, which is the newest release available in CISPRO 8. And that's now not necessarily a reporting tool, but a great way to be able to extract some data out. With all of that going on, we've always had some additional tools in our toolkit. We've had K3 reports, AutoMail, the ability to do document distribution, bartender for any sort of label printing and external tools that still tap into that rich ERP data. SQL Server reporting services, Excel, as much as we'd like to say that no one uses data outside of CISPRO, Excel still is probably used predominantly in a lot of areas within the business. You may have had some additional analytics, Power BI, Click, Profix for some budgeting, financing, there may be additional tools as well. So there's a lot that's available in the toolkit. Today, Nick and I are gonna focus on three specific areas. We wanna talk a little bit more about CISPRO reporting services, K3 reports, AutoMail, 
and bartender. We're really just gonna focus in and hone in on these three and talk about the compare and contrast. We have had sessions that have focused on a few of the other areas, including business insights and some of the reporting and analytics tools in other webinars. So we're not ignoring them. It's just not necessarily the focus for today. So when we talk about those four areas, what really I wanna talk about is the fact that we've got three sets of tools that are available for us for document creation. We've got Cisco Reporting Services that allows us to create and consume and distribute documents and reports. We also have K3 Reports that helps deliver some of that. Bartender also does the same thing. And then purely on the document distribution side, we've got AutoMail that focuses purely on document distribution, whereas with Report SRS and K3 Reports, you have the ability to do document distribution as well. Okay, so let's learn a little bit more about what of those three that are there. But before we do that, just want to get a sense of where you're currently at. So if I want to go ahead and have that poll kick off, which I see that Nick's kicked off for me, so that's great. Just want to get a sense from on screen, what is it that you currently have? And choose all of those that apply for me, if you don't mind. We'll leave that poll open for a few minutes. Unsurprisingly, it looks like absolutely everyone on this call is using reporting services for reporting services. Got about 84 that have voted, just another couple seconds. Let's see if we get a few more votes in. All right, excellent. Great, so that particular poll We've got 94% that are using CISPRO reporting services already. So for the other 6%, we'll go and talk a little bit about what that, what SRS is all about. We've got just over half of you using K3 reports, as well as AutoMail, about 20% using Bartender, and then SSRS is also in use. Great to know. That's, that's an in-house skill set that you've got. Fantastic. Okay, so let's start out. I said I'd tell you a little bit about CISPRO reporting services. CISPRO reporting services was introduced by CISPRO, as I say, with CISPRO 6.1 or so going forward, and it's been improved over the years. It's predominantly used to design professional document and reports using Crystal. And fundamentally, it's a Crystal engine that's backing CISPRO reporting services. Now, with SRS, you've got standard templates, and it's not just about having those documents that are created, but it's also about what you do in, in terms of distribution. You can print them, you can email them, you can save them away for you to use in the future, including the archiving functionality. So without getting into too much detail, what I do want to do is show you the fact that with SRS, there are two areas that we have. We've got documents that are separated out from reports. What do I mean by that? If I go into the reporting service itself, what you'll notice is all of the modules that we have within CISPRO. And as I drill into them, we've got our journal reports, our tax reports that are available. If I go into my general ledger, start to extend out into my trial balances. If I'm talking about my jobs, I may have my tracking, production, that's fundamentally what we're talking about in terms of report. I'm trying to report on something. I'm consuming something that's happened. Whereas with documents, we have the ability to have transactional level information that's getting surfaced up. And again, broken down based on modules, but we've now got information that's relevant for various areas of the business. So if I've got supplier invoices that are coming in. I may have purchase orders that I'm issuing. I need to now engage with someone outside of my organization potentially. So I need to have something that looks a little bit more professional. And within both documents and reports, I have the ability to tailor existing formats or create my own. And this is now putting my stamp on what it is. So within the tools, we have available. For example, if I come into my sales area, what you'll notice is I've got the ability to go ahead. Oh, 
I don't want to be archiving. I've got the ability from sales to be able to design my invoices. That invoice is something that I can use to go ahead and print. I've got conditions that I can choose depending on which location I'm sending information from. Might want to use a different logo. Might want to have different terms and conditions embedded and stamped within that. Now, what you'll notice is from here, I've got a list of all of the options that I have. I can go in and design my templates and I can choose which template I want to design. So if I take my lovely invoice, I can choose a particular format and I can start designing it. Now, there are additional options that are available. I'm not gonna get into all of them because by no means is this a training session. But what I want to drill into is the fact that this particular template is available to me in Crystal. So anyone that has Crystal skills, you are now able to go ahead and start tailoring this. I can choose to add in logos to make it a little bit more colorful for me. I can add in notes for terms and conditions. But what I think is important to point out is with Sysbro and the partnership on Sysbro Reporting Services, I don't have to go ahead and choose a specific set of data and go directly to SQL. Sysbro has actually built programs that do a lot of the calculation for us. So what you'll notice is in the invoice, I've got various elements of that invoice. I might have details about my customer that's at a summary level. Then I've got details against the transaction levels itself. What are the items that I'm selling? Are there any freight items, any service charges that are tagged onto that? All of that data that you have against your sales orders that you're capturing that you need to perhaps confirm back to your customer based on what they've ordered from you, is all available for you, easily prepackaged into, so you don't have to build that all out. So it's done a lot of the heavy lifting for you. And that's fundamentally the benefit that we've got with SRS. So with SRS, we've got the combination of standard technology with Crystal, some really powerful business objects that are there. And then in addition to that, what you have is the ability for me to be able to invoke a program that calls on that format and batches or sends that individual document out for me as well. So that's the power of Cisco Reporting Services is now we've got something that is customer ready, generates a document, and it doesn't have to be a physical print. It could be just a PDF that we send off to someone in an email. So now we're saving a little bit of paper and going away towards that sustainability goal. But it's all now tied in directly into the ERP data without me having to understand and dr drill into all of the lovely logic and built-in details. So it's it's not fully technical. It gives me the ability for someone like me with relatively low technical skills to be able to deliver that forward. So that in a high level nutshell is all about SRS. We've taken a little look at it. So at this point, I'm gonna hand over to Nick who's gonna talk about K3 reports. Thank you, Darshani. So K3 Reports is a different engine that we've built in-house to help um, harness some of the power of Crystal Reports. So it's a service eye reporting engine. So all the logic and the generation of reports is done server side. And that's not to be confused with CISPR server side reporting. This is done slightly different using the runtime. It's all about printing documents or sending documents or just generally generating documents in different modes, whether that's single documents at a time or generating a whole batch of them. So typically we use this kind of product when the documentation requirements are uh, surplus to what CISPRO can give out the box. So when we've got you know things like commercial invoices being the most popular one lately, um, or packing lists or box manifests, or anything additional to that, we kind of end up using K3 reports because it gives us the server side technology to automate these print jobs, to preview them in a different way and to kind of kind of work with them outside of the CISPRO ecosystem, but all at the same time staying completely within CISPRO. Um, so these can be designed, you can even design the reports using CISPRO and then harness it through the K3 report runtime. There's a few little bit extra features on top of that. You've got a barcode API, so it can generate QR codes or code one to eight barcode formats with relative ease and you can view them and preview them in a web browser which is really nice so 
I'm going to go through a quick demo of what we've done. Um, I got control there, Darshan. Can you pass over? There we go. Okay. Um, don't know if I can. Thank you. Right. So, what I've de what I've developed inside CISPRO now is a commercial invoice. And now, some of the I've noticed a few names in this room already that might be familiar with this kind of process. So, because we've delivered at a few sites, and obviously these requirements have come out since Brexit and leaving the EU. There's been more need to generate documents. The commercial invoice has been the most, most prevalent one. So what I have built inside CISPRO is a, just a simple print that calls into the K3 reports API to generate a document. So if I go to my sales orders and dispatch note query module, I will be able to run my little preview. So this is a non-standard button that I've added in that uses a VB script to call K3 reports. So one of the technical or kind of requirements with K3 reports is it is a more technical product. So we will quite typically design these for you guys, unless you've got the technical skills in-house to do it. So while CISPRO reporting services got more of a GUI and that kind of on top of it to kind of make it a bit easier to manage yourselves, this is quite technical in what's required. So like I say, this is a non-standard button I've built in. So I'm gonna just navigate to any old dispatch note. And the idea is that I can simply just click that print commercial invoice button and it should basically generate myself in the web browser a very basic report. And then from there, I can go on, I can print it, I can save it down, or I can even email it from within the K3 reports utility. So you can see there, that's open it in my browser of choice. Um, we're outside of CISPRO, but rendering on top of the CISPRO data step. And the other technical aspect of this, the data is coming direct from SQL. So there's no, it's not using the business object layer to render the data. So there is more of a technical skill to get the data correct and validated against the business objects. So we try not to use K3 reports for super complex tax or VAT reporting scenarios when that is already baked into CISPRO. We'll use this for those little documents on top that your business needs. You can see here, I've got a QR code embedded in, which can obviously can be used across. And I can obviously include anything else I want to do in, this, um, in the same document. Um, aside from this, there's also active logs. So I can see when print jobs are going through my K3 reports utility and what kind of printers they go into. Second to this, I've built a completely non-standard application using application builders, which lists all of my open dispatch notes allows me to print my commercial invoice or preview it again. So I'm going to leave preview off in this case. And if I hit print, I should then see that will send off a task to K3 reports and that will say it's printed. And I've got it set to a PDF print and you should see that it's now dropped into here, which is 248. And that's my same report automatically printed in the background. So again, the power of it is I can use this to report, I can print to any printer automatically, whether that's from CISPRO itself or from Translucent or Orchard or any other utility that we have. So that's kind of the power of K3 reports in a nutshell. I'm gonna go back to the presentation. And so the next thing I want to talk about is Bartender. So Bartender is heavily used within a lot of our customer businesses, all, for, all around label printing. So while K3 reports and SRS are good at kind of the documents, the A4 printouts, what really, what we, what we struggle with in those tools are the smaller labels that come on your Zebra printers with different smaller stock. And this is where Bartender really shines. It has support for a huge amount of printer manufacturers, Zebra being the most popular one that we see out there and all the different ranges of label sizes and stock that you'd get in, whether it's thermal printing or whatnot. So again, this is about automation of great and creation of labels and barcodes integrates to multiple business systems with relative ease. You can either go straight to SQL to create triggers, or you can use webhooks. Anything that your kind of application support bartender will have a way to trigger out based of. 
It allows monitoring and printing, so I can constantly see how many integrations are performing, how many labels are being printed, where they're being printed to. And it comes with its inbuilt label designer. So this is outside of the crystal designer. It has its own designer, which I'll show you in a moment, where you can add on barcodes, you can add on all the additional text, and you can make it obviously compliant to any rules that govern your business model. Um, you can add in RFID uh, tags and everything. So like I say, it supports multiple label formats. So when you're designing them, you will select your label sizes and design it based on the label size, and it all supports the common label printer brands. Finally, there's a web tool for printing manually printed labels, which allows you to go to a web browser and type in a bit of information to generate a simple label to the printer. So right, I'm going to go to that now. Darsh, yeah, thank you. I can't do my control alt shift. Okay, so I'm going to start quickly in the designer. So do I have what I have a library or anything? So this is my library of labels. So I've got a sample stock label that I've added into it. And if I just quickly open that up, I'll see this is my template that I've designed. Really, really box standard. I've literally put the stock code as a barcode on here and the job number. And that is linked to my embedded data sources. If I look here, I've got a form and it allows me to enter particular information in the job and the stock code to generate it. Now, I've done a really, really basic form. Within these forms, you can do lockups, you can do validations, you can make it entirely more complex than what you're seeing here now. For simplicity, I've just left it as free format entry, so I can put whatever I want in there and print what I need. So that's my designer. You can see I can, I've got various, I might have checked this out. I've got various barcode formats from, from QR to 128. I can add images and you can see here, I've configured it for my Zebra ZT610 printer here. And that has a various height and width and height associated with it. So once I've designed my label, I can trigger that. So I can either do that again, as a automated task, a trigger event from Cispro, which I'll show you in a moment, or it might just be a really simple manual print. So if I go to my bartender print portal, which is accessible from Chrome, I can go into the library and I can see my stock label here. So I can simply click that. And I can have a list of stock labels categorized differently and I can select my printer, the copies, and I can either preview print, I'm gonna preview in this instance, Here's the data entry form that I showed you before. So like I say, at the minute, I've just got free format, but you can put validations and different controls and make this form entirely more complex than what you've seen here now. And I can hit preview and then it'll generate me a barcode, which I can then print to my printer. Okay. So what now, if I want to trigger this stock label each time I receive a job in Cispro, because that would be you know, a valid point where I might need a label for each product that comes out. So I want to print it and I want to base it on the number of copies to print how many labels so I can stick it on the side of each product. So what we have there is we have a tool called the Integration Builder in Bartender. And I'll show you briefly what that looks like without going into it too complex. So we set it up a integration file, which basically this particular one is triggered from SQL. So it's looking for a new record that gets entered into a particular table and what it's doing then is for each data in there it's going to print a document in this case it's printing my sample stock label if i look at some of the other information at the minute i've hard coded it to a printer you can see here the copies here is actually um, a variable this is pulling it from the data set so based on the number of um, items i book in that's how many copies of the label i'll get I could have done the same with the printer. I could have based it on a variable, but now I'm going to just hard code it in and I can actually put that advanced printer options for failovers. So if the printer is offline, it can fail over and print to a secondary printer on the shop floor. I've got some linking from my queries to the label information. And ultimately that is all I kind of need. Once, I've, once I'm happy with that, I deploy it and then that allow, then I'll start triggering as I go in. So let's see if I can uh, demonstrate that. So for now, I've got this little tool here, which is emulating a print job as it comes in. 
So if I go into Cispro now, and if I print a job sheet, I should see, or hopefully see, a label come through on my little emulator. So if I go to work in progress, job postings, and then go into job receipts. I'm going to click on a job from before. I'm just going to put two in and hit post. So hopefully you can see here now receive my label and it's coming. So that's emulating how quick it is from posting a label to what it would like appear on the shop floor. So really, really powerful tool. It is production ready. It's made for a high velocity of labels and it really shines on the shop floor and in the manufacturing industries, especially around compliance and governance. Okay, so I'm just gonna post that out. And I think that will do it for bartender. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks very much, Nick. It gives us a really great overview of both K3 reports and bartender and kind of where they sit and fit. I want to talk about the document distribution side of things, which is Automail. So Automail is basically something that will take a PDF document, emails coming in with PDFs, and the idea behind it is to create emails with content pages attached, and it does the batch emailing out. Fundamentally, if you've got Crystal Reports or Cisco Reporting Services that's generating that PDF for you, it will go ahead and take that and help and take care of that distribution. Take script files as well with templates to create your professional stationery. So if you have a very basic format that you've created in SRS and you want to maybe have conditional logos that print, you don't want to take care of that in SRS, Automail can take care of that for you. The nice benefit of Automail itself, and the reason why it continues to live in the Cispro ecosystem is the fact that it can parse out that particular file that gets generated to see who and where it needs to go. It can be emailed and printed, what the contents are, maybe additional attachments that we want to go ahead and send through. And you don't have to now start building out really complicated crystal formulas to be able to do that. With Cispro itself, we know that there's a bit of a limitation in terms of the number of contacts and the email addresses that you might be able to store. When you're engaging with your customers, you don't always have just one email address against that particular customer that you want to send your invoices, your delivery notes, all through to. And with Automail, you now have a robust engine to be able to distribute that out. Now, we talked about the fact that it's PDF documents. It doesn't really matter where that PDF document's getting generated. And that's really the power of it. Because you can start with Cispro. You can even take a K3 report because that's going to generate a PDF for you, as Nick just showed. You may have additional programs within your ecosystem that may still also need to get distributed out. You may have a CRM system. You may have a CAD system that's generating engineering drawings. You want to send that out. As long as it's generating that PDF, you can then go ahead and have some logic built into it that Automail will take care of and distribute for you. So that fundamentally is, is the power of Automail. So let's take a look at Automail. I'm going to start in Cispro itself. And within Cispro, if I take a look at my document, I have an invoice. I've defined, as we looked at earlier, some header information within this particular document. And that's where the power of Automail's logic comes in, is the ability for me to extend that out. I've got syntax here that I can add in as a non-developer to say, I want this to go to a particular email address against the customer. And I've got a formula in here to say, pick it up maybe against a custom form field. Or if there's no email address for that customer, because we haven't managed to capture that yet, send it to an internal person who's going to then go ahead and print it off and mail it if we're still having to do that. Gives you some subject details. You now, you now have control over what subject goes out rather than having a generic message. And then within that, you can have a little bit of body that goes through in the email. You can change that messaging as you go along. And you can start adding in additional documents. 
my terms and conditions. I want to make sure that that gets sent out with every single invoice because that's really important. That's not something that I want to have to manually attach. And I'll be honest, I'm too lazy to design an SRS report that creates a sub-report with all of those terms as, as they change. I just want to have an updated PDF that will go get sent out every time. I might even have some notification, additional notification that I want to send out. It will take care of that. And then finally, the last piece that I want to talk about is the fact that I may want to save these documents that are getting sent away in a particular folder. And that, for me, is building up a really nice, quick archiving tool that I have available for others within the business to be able to access as well. Everything else still remains the same as I would have for any other invoice. I'm still leveraging the power of SRS with the logic built in from a business object standpoint. So all of the heavy calculations are taken care of by Cisbro. Now, I've got my template all set up. It's got all of the lovely tags that Automail will know and understand. So if I go ahead and choose to reprint a particular invoice that I created earlier today, if I send that off, what's going to happen is it's picking it up from the Automail perspective. Anyone that uses Automail, we've got a lovely little monitoring tool that when I refresh, we'll see an increase in the number of batches. And if I've done this wrong, which it looks like I have, it will tell me whether that email gets sent or not. And in this case, what I wanna do is when I log on, I actually may have an earlier email that I sent through. Now this is for a particular PO that came in, PO September, 2022 from this particular customer. There's my invoice, and it doesn't have the header details. It stripped those off. It's not sending all of that. It's simply using that for logic. I've got a trial license, so that's why it's giving me a trial. It's also included my terms and conditions, so everything to do with this particular order, any T's and C's. And I've got a bit of a newsletter that I want to share with the individuals um, that I do business with. We've got a conference coming up, want to tell them about it. We've got some training that's available as well that they can sign up for. And that's all getting sent out without someone remembering to attach that to the invoices that are going out. Now, as I send that out and I, I print that off, it's also told me that I want to save that particular invoice away. And that saved it away into a nice neat folder for me, which I then can go ahead and pull up and show anywhere within Cispro itself when I have it associated with that customer. So against that customer, I've got that exact same invoice that I can open up that's been distributed. So really quickly now, I have the ability to have my collections team, my telesales team, go ahead and keep track of all of the customer-specific documents. It's not doing anything fancy. It's simply gone ahead and saved that file into a particular folder. So we've got a nice, quick archiving and document retrieval tool, a very light document management system that I've built in, simply with Automail and then document distribution. Now, we talked about the fact that that particular item didn't go through. I might have had a mistake in my email address. I might not have pulled it through. This is available for me on the server, but not every individual that works in document distribution, sending out invoices, is going to go ahead and have access to the server. So the nice thing about Automail is there is also a web monitoring tool that's available. That at a glance gives you a great dashboard of everything that we've sent out so far, and you can choose when to clear it and so on, how long you want to keep that history for. It shows you also in here the body of the email that was sent out and all of the attachments that Automail sent out. So we looked at those in the email from a customer, as well as the invoice details. And if I've got any retries, what happened to any failed items when it comes to the email, as well as all the jobs. 
Now in this case, I've got a failed batch. It will show me the details of what's happening with that failed batch as well. So the nice part about the automail is it not only takes care of the document distribution, also helps me with some of my very light document management visibility and archiving functionality, but it also has a fantastic monitoring tool that's available. Now what you'll notice is because I'm in the web browser, I also have this available from anywhere technically if I want in order to be able to access and see what's going on. And that I think is a really nice addition to Automail that we've got in there as well. So high level, we showed a little bit of what Automail can do there. We've looked at SRS, we've looked at K3 reports, Bartender. So which one? Which one do you use when? want to have a little bit of a conversation around this because it, some of the things to think about based on what is involved are include technical skills, performance, accessibility, and where and when you're using this from. So, Nick, one of the things that we talked about was the fact that you've got SRS and K3 reports. Now, K3 report seems quite technical to me as well. Am I designing all the reports from scratch in Crystal? Did I hear that correctly? So typically you'd be designing them with a blank template, taking it from SQL. Um, so it's not, you don't have those samples necessarily that you get out of the box with SRS. You will be building it based on your business requirement, which is why there's less technical skills involved to build up because we sometimes have to quite write quite complex queries that go beyond into other CISPRO databases to pull information in to generate complex documents. So based on the requirements, we build it out from there. Now, CISPRO also has the programs to be able to invoke. So the thing that I like about K3 reports is if CISPRO doesn't have a program for something that I wanna generate a crystal or a PDF for, I can leverage K3 reports for something like that because by default, I just need a way to trigger and for that for me to get that information generated i don't have to rely on something that exists since it's pre-built for me to be able to generate that document as well yeah correct so the documents can be then triggered based on the api and then like, like i showed before we can even some occasionally there is the requirement to build a program using cispro's power tailoring to give a gui towards that but typically you wouldn't necessarily need that gui to generate a report at all which is obviously some of the powerful stuff behind k3 reports Fantastic. Now we looked at Bartender a little bit as well. Now it's interesting because I've got the ability to add a barcode onto a crystal report as this is for reporting services. I can also add a barcode onto K3 reports. So why Bartender? So Bartender is much more powerful when it comes to compatibility with different table sizes, formats, printers, and generally it is a lot more it can handle high volumes of, of data and also a, lo a lot larger, wide array of barcode formats are available in, in, bartend in Bartender. So like I say, case reports really handles well with A4 sizes or A5, so your standard paper sizes from a printer. Bartender is perfect for volume-based printing of small label to even larger labels if you need it. Fantastic. And I think for me, every time I think of Bartender, I think of the, the go-to when it comes to production-ready labels, and especially when you've got a high, high volume, high pace, high speed production line, where I might have to generate multiple labels for exactly the same product because something is going on the product itself to identify that with maybe serialization. And then I've got something that goes on the box of the product that it gets packaged into, and then perhaps even the pallet. So I now need that exact same label multiple times in potentially different sizes as well. And that, that for me is where Bartender really sings. I could do the same in Cisco, but it's quite fiddly and, and I wouldn't have the ability to easily change different codes and formats and things like that as well. Yeah, exactly that. Exactly Perfect. That. Perfect. And I think also, when it comes to thermal printers, which is what you referred to earlier with Bartender, it's something that sits really nicely and natively. Bartenders really focus very much in and around making sure that label printing is what they do, that it, that is very much their focus. 
Whereas when we're talking about super reporting services or K3 reports, what we're talking about is, is focusing on trying to do documents and reports, really. It, it's not something that's focused purely on labels. So that's not the core functionality. If you're talking about documents, I wouldn't really look at Bartender. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Um, and likewise, so we've also got the whole governments and compliance side of with Bartend. If you look at some of the templates they provide out the, out the box, you'll see there's a whole raft of kind of GS1 style formatted barcodes and everything else that you can bake in there. So that's where it's really strong at as well. Perfect. I've actually got a question that's come in. Um, Nick, regarding the technical skills, are you referring to the expert documents? Sorry. And yeah, um, Mark, that's right. It, it is very much the export documents because now you're starting to pull in additional information. You may have it within CISPRO itself, but you try and put that together into SRS is a little bit more heavy lifting than K3 reports. So when you're talking about the technical skills needed to be able to pull that together, K3 reports really sits in really nicely with that and you can trigger it off as, uh, at the end of that um, dispatch process. Yeah, exactly. And we, we always come across funny requirements with export based on obviously you kind of your, your duty rates or different things. If you're shipping to a like a freight forward or if, you, or if you're going direct to the country and you've got your own business set up there and you're doing intercompany trading, we always find that there's always nuances between what we have to present on these documents that we find having just a standard dispatch query business object just doesn't give us the information because in a way we're actually changing the information on the fly based on certain rules within the business and that's what we find we have to build in using these technical skills into the SQL queries. I think for me it's, it's also about the complexity of the requirements when we're starting to get into slightly more complicated requirements that go beyond the standard of um, CISPRO and traditionally what you would generate from a business out of an ERP system, that's where K3 reports really shines. It's it's that slightly more complicated level um, that really goes in. Hopefully that answers the question there, Mark. But if not, please use the Q&A and definitely have a little bit more of a conversation around that. And then the last thing we talked about really was automail. Now, for, from my perspective, SRS does a fantastic job of document distribution. So yeah, you can absolutely use CISPRO reporting services to be able to send out all of your purchase orders or your batch invoices or maybe distribute your jobs that you've got in through different elements of your warehouse or production floor. No issue there. Automail comes into its own when you're now starting to have to do additional logic again. You're adding that layer of complexity to where you're distributing your documents through to. And like Bartender, Automail's focus is very much just on document distribution. So they focus in and around making sure that that runs through seamlessly and being able to send it to multiple individuals, multiple email addresses, multiple locations. And it very much is in and around that. I love the fact that it gives you that additional layer of visibility in terms of actually identifying if something's not necessarily gone where it is to be able to diagnose becomes a really powerful thing as well. And that to me gives me that second real benefit around document distribution. Is there anything else that I've missed around Automail that you wanted to add there, Nick? Yeah, I was gonna ask about how you would set up the different email addresses in CISPRO. What would you, because obviously CISPRO comes with a natively one email address. How would you add more into that? Send documents yeah. to different people. That's, that's a great point. So there's a couple of things. If you've got contact management, you've got multiple email addresses that you could natively store against that, but then you'd have to build which email address to use into your SRS report. But uh, the other way to do it is against your master customer master record itself, where someone may be sitting there and transacting every single day. Create a custom form field for each individual email address that you might want to distribute that document to. And you would choose which one, depending on the document formats, if I've got an order acknowledgement, I've got an order acknowledgement email address against that customer that I'm gonna be using, as opposed to something that I'm gonna send an invoice out to versus someone that, something that I might even send a PO to because I'm, that customer might actually be a supplier of mine. So that's pretty good in that sense. That's amazing. So is, is, is Automail purely about emailing or is there anything else you can do? Can you print yeah. and uh, letter it to someone? 
You see, now now you're just stacking the deck there. You're absolutely right. I focus so much in and around emailing because look, I'm Canadian and I come from the West Coast where I have to hug a tree every time I print a piece of paper. So I try not to physically talk about printing. But yes, of course, there are people that still need to produce paper. You don't have email addresses for everyone. You're still stuffing envelopes for that. Yes, 100%. And it's about that batch where I've got 600 invoices that might be going out of which only two need to get physically printed and sent. And the 598 of the other ones will go ahead and get emailed out. So for those, it will take care of all, that, all of that automatic printing for you and all of that logic. You're not having to have someone say, right, everything that I wanna mail, I'm gonna have to print out separately, everything that I wanna go ahead and send off to a different email address, I'm gonna have to send off separately as well. So it takes care of that for you in that batch without you having to think about which ones you're gonna send where. Amazing. And I thought Canadians all about facts. Well, we do facts every so often, but we've moved on since I left, so I should have left the country earlier. <laughs> we've got a great comment here from Mark. Um, actually, it goes back to the conversation about bartender, and you're right, we've not talked about this. Mark's actually linked scales to pass weights in bartender for that particular job. And so with CISPRO, if you're having to integrate to scales, it's a lot more difficult. And actually, that's a really good point, Mark. Thanks for bringing that up. Bartender natively will allow you to integrate to Wayne, Wayne scales as well, and it lives in that environment so nicely. Nick, I'm not sure if you wanted to add to that as well. Oh, no, that's perfect for me. Excellent. Good stuff. I see another note in here that I've missed. Hang on a second. I feel like I need hold music. <laughs> so, I think it's gone. Okay, there's a note here um, around client side reporting or just server side. It would be good if you can clarify that a little bit more for me in terms of uh, what functionality, because I apologize, I didn't catch the question as it was coming up. And so if we can just get a little bit more clarity on that, that would be great. Now, that's a good point because we haven't talked a little bit about client side and server side reporting. That was something that was introduced with Cispro 7. And as we're moving more and more towards server-side reporting only as, as customers upgrade to eight, because there's newer technology that Cisper's introduced where you don't have the ability to go ahead and sit within a standard client. You may be sitting in a web browser. You may be sitting on a mobile device. And now all of a sudden, we need that document generation to sit on the server and be able to take care of that for you. There are some implications with server side, and actually that's that's a good point because as we're moving more and more towards Cisco 8, we're finding more customers that need automail in terms of that document distribution because with moving to server side, rather than sending an email locally from your computer and your own email address, you are sending that email just on the server. So you've got to have something called SMTP set up and you're sending that email from one email address. So before, when Joe in accounts used to be able to send out all the invoices and Fred was sending the purchase orders, it's now all going to be either accounts or a generic at businessname.com email address. And with AutoMail, you can start distributing and shuffling that a little, little bit broader as well. Now, there's some additional nuances in the way that behavior around client side and server side work. And it's about user behavior change in terms of where you go to preview. The nice part about moving to server side is you do get a bit of performance improvement because all of the work rather than it being done on your individual machine is being done on a big powerful server in the background. So hopefully that helps differentiate a little bit. But I don't see the question clarified there. So feel free to maybe drop me a note and we'll kind of get in there. Got a note in here about printing an auto mail. Is it standard? If you've got a statement in auto mail that says email, then email, P, then print, go to a default address, it's definitely yes, you're right. You can definitely build all of that into and have auto mail split that out. So it'll tell you which printer you want to send it to, which email address. If you wanted to do both, it would take care of that as well. Server side reporting is it a single queue? If we have multiple printers, 
Does it queue at the printer level or is that just one queue? So that's a good point. So Riverside at this point, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, is a single queue. You can choose which priority level you want to set. So certain things can be higher priority, which means it will go ahead and print before the other ones, but the processing gets done in the queue and then the printer queues kick in. As soon as the processing is done, send down to the printer is where it will get picked up. So yeah. hopefully that, that clarifies. Yep. Yep. I think, it's, yep. I think it's, one, it's one queue per company, I think, isn't it? And I think yes. you can change the processing polling rate down as well a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's Absolutely. Also how it works. Yeah. Perfect. All right. So we've covered quite a bit of ground there in terms of what, what the difference level is. Performance. K3 reports is for reporting services server side. We talked a little bit about performance um, and then accessibility finally. So the, the one thing that I do like about K3 reports is the fact that you can access those reports directly from the web. And you have that web interface, whereas with Cispro, you are looking directly into Cispro reporting engine itself. And there are tools within Cispro that allow you to see that, no problem. All right. We had one little question come in, one last one. Yep, I'm just reading that now. I find, Nick, the older I get, I can't multitask, I can't read and chew gum at the same time. <laughs> so if you were auto mailing an order confirmation, would you add a form field in the section that has the delivery address and when it would send the mail to the address in that single order instead of a master email address? So yes, you could actually build it in into a formula to say if it's a particular customer that you want to send it to that email address, you could do it that way. Or what you could do is define it so that you can say that email address is the one I always want to use. So in this case, my custom order acknowledgement or custom delivery address. If that doesn't exist, send it to the master email address instead. Because I may not have it populated for all of my customers and in that batch, want to pick it up individually. Hopefully that's answered the actual question. If not, feel free to clarify, definitely. It answers it, sounds like it, excellent. Good stuff. I've launched that poll. If you don't mind. <laughs> All right, so we've, we've covered a little bit of ground here and I just want to get a sense of what it is that you think is going to add the most value to your particular business. Now, only 5% have voted so far. There we go, that number's inching up, fantastic. Over half have voted, just a few more coming in now. All right, so it looks like that is the bulk of votes that are probably gonna come in. Oh, no, no. 79% have voted. All right, two more seconds and we'll close that poll. If you would do the honors for me, Nick, please. I have closed it now. Thank you very much. So what are we looking at? We have 56% that finds this for reporting services adding the most value. And believe it or not, just under 20% are equally divided between K3 reports and automail. That's really good to know, actually. That's fantastic. Bartender brings up the rear for me at 6%. So not, not too bad there, not too shabby at all. Excellent. All right. We've, we've had very much of a whistle to stop tour today, and I know we had a bit of a discussion as well. There's more information that's available. Um, 
We've gone into a little bit more detail around some of the tools with Cisco Reporting Services. In fact, Nick had done a couple of quick 20 minute videos on printing hacks that really go into some of the cool tips and tricks that you can do with Spur Reporting Services itself. If you take a look at that hack series, and I sound, it, it sounds really terrible when I say hack, but it's more about productivity hacks, things that will save you time. And those two are available at that URL. The, P, um, the video recording will be shared afterwards as well. There is fantastic help that's available publicly for SysPro 8 specifically that you can follow through there. We've got some details around AutoMail and the document management solution itself. And for anyone that hasn't already sat through the SRS training, K3 hosts two days of um, SysPro reporting services training on a periodic basis. So contact your account manager to find out when the next one is. And it really does go into all of the details of how do you start from existing templates, modifying them to all of the tools that we really just skim the surface on today. And if that's something that you or someone else in your organization needs to just brush up on, it goes beyond Crystal, really it goes into the CISPR elements of it as well. So I think that's quite useful. The other thing that we've got in there are certain documents that we've created. There's one particular document that we found as customers are moving to server-side reporting. They have a couple of things that they need to be mindful of, a couple of things that they need to look out for, or some things that might behave a little bit differently, or if they have any troubleshooting and things like that. Support have done a fantastic job and keep this document up to date. They're, some of them are gotchas, some of them are troubleshooting tips themselves. It's in the handout section for GoToWebinar, so if you wanna download those. The web monitors are relatively new to us tool for AutoMail. So I've got a bit of a fact sheet that I've thrown in there as well in the handouts. And believe it or not, I can't remember the third handout that we uploaded in there. Ah, the third handout I think is gonna help one of the questions in there, which is some of the nuances of things you can do, little tips and tricks with AutoMail when you're going into design. Some of the things that will really help drill in and if you wanted to both print and email, back to Nick's point, how do you set that up? How do you actually do that? And it goes through step by step what you have to do for some of those weird and wonderful things in AutoMail. I thought it was a really cool document for just things that you might not have touched on in a while to go in and play with. So that is all that we have in here. All right, that's us. We've had kind of one final question, Darcy, if you want to. Yes, of course. So it's for Mark again around, it's around the queuing of things. So I think in answer to, to the question around over split sites and running factory doc and month end reports, it's supposed to mention that the SRS queue is separate from the document print queue, which means they right. would run together. So documents run on its own tangent while well, you know, SRS report, which the finance team would be running, would be running separately to that. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. So I'm just gonna read the question out. Um, it, it, the gist of the question is, if the accounts are running month end and they're running their reports and they wanna print something like a works order, does factory have to wait until month end is done? Or can they actually do that separately because they have their own individual printers? So, it, you know, is production going to pause just while we're trying to finish all our month end reporting? Because we've given that a higher priority in that queue when we're moving to server side. And that's actually a really valid point. So to, to, to Nick's answer, we talked initially when we talked about SRS about the fact that there are documents and there are reports and each one of those has its own separate queue. So it does actually process differently. Now within documents, if you're printing a works order versus an invoice batch run, those would be within the same queue. So yes, that you would have to look at prioritizing one over the other if you had a rush job that you needed to get out. So you have the ability and there's a GUI, um, a front end screen where you can change the priority and increase the priority of a job if you're waiting for something to be able to have that process through a little bit quickly. But but to answer the original question, which is, is month end gonna get affected with production and vice versa, they're separated out. So they would affect, they wouldn't affect each other. Nick Sanity check, did that answer make sense? That was perfect, perfectly coined. Right. I, should, I should say Mark Sanity check, does that answer your question? 
Okay, so it sounds like he's going to have to have a bit of a deeper conversation around that. Yep, no worries. We, we can definitely take that offline. And um, if, if there is enough demand, uh, use the Q&A at the end of the GoToWebinar. If there are things that you wanted to know more about, things that you want us to do a separate session on or another webinar on as well, please feel free to put that in the Q&A because we do pay attention to that. That's the reason why we've got this particular webinar. It was requested for um, deep, doing a bit of a deeper dive in terms of some of the reporting tools that we have available. All right, well, that's getting close to our time. And I just wanted to say thanks very much to everyone that attended. Hopefully you found something of use today and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you all.